welcome to the future, or in fact, that's what Mirai means in Japanese. This is the Toyota Mirai, and it is the first series production hydrogen car. We're getting quite an early look here, one of the first cars in the country to give you a little rundown on what this car is actually like to drive. And the answer so far seems to be much like a normal car, which is not necessarily a bad thing. So how this car works is that it runs on hydrogen. There's a hydrogen fuel cell in the car that then powers some electric motors, which then gives you the drive. Now, the big plus point of electric motors, as we know in electric cars, is you get that instant response, that instant torque. It's like an on-off switch. And you very much get it with this. I mean, obviously it is not a fast car with a zero to 62 miles per hour time of 9.6 seconds and it is a relatively heavy car so it's not going to handle like a Lotus Elise but I have to say for just pottering around so far so good it's very quiet actually until you put your foot down and it makes quite an unusual sort of like space age blender noise it sort of goes and off it goes and actually at quite a rate now the total output for this car is 158 brake horsepower and 335 newton meters of torque so whilst we're not on a motorway testing today, you can imagine that, that torque would actually come in handy. Now as for the looks of the car, they are, well, maybe not to everybody's tastes. I think that's probably being kind. But obviously it's all developed in the wind tunnel and it's a very efficient car in terms of how much drag it has and things like that. And that's all very important because after all, that's what this car is all about. Now hydrogen is still a bit of a mystery to the vast majority of people, so let's go through a few of the basics. You go to your hydrogen filling station, which granted there aren't lots of at the moment, but considering hydrogen is the most abundant resource in the universe, there's going to be more of them and hydrogen is almost certainly going to be what future cars run on. You uh, put the nozzle into your car, it takes three to five minutes to fill up, which is considerably faster than what it takes to charge an electric car and then off you go and you have a range of about 340 miles or so which is broadly similar to what a combustion engine equivalent would have. What's the plus side then I hear you ask? Well of course it's the fact that it produces zero grams per kilometre of CO2 because the only waste product is water. Whilst the exterior of this car certainly splits opinion, the interior actually I have to say is really nice. It's quite futuristic with all these glossy black plastics here you know, really sweeping elements to the dashboard that is really unusual. I mean, of course, certain elements are sort of from the uh, Prius, and you, you know, you can pick up on in here, but I have to say, on the whole, it feels quite different. It feels unusual and maybe a little bit special in comparison to most cars that you'll drive. There are various dials and things to tell you exactly how fuel efficient you're being, and the speedometer is actually set up and on the dashboard, so it's only ever a glance away whenever you're driving. There's a nice large touchscreen infotainment display, again, shrouded in this glossy plastic, which looks really nice. And just below that, you've got a second smaller screen that controls all of your climate control. Front occupants are treated to some rather supportive leather seats, which are really nice and comfortable, actually. I can totally see myself doing a long journey in this car, particularly with the tranquility and the lack of noise. In the back, you'll find seating for a further two, bringing the total occupancy to four. There's a nice central armrest that has various storage facilities and the leather seats back there are nice and comfortable as well. There's plenty of leg room. Headroom is okay for anybody who isn't, you know, green giant tall, uh, but a six footer will sit back there quite nicely. The Mirai's 361 litre boot is smaller than traditional rivals, but this is due to the positioning of hydrogen tanks. But how many MPG will this Toyota Mirai do? Well, it's difficult to work out because hydrogen is actually measured in kilograms so it's difficult to tell you exactly how many how much the consumption is but let's put it this way it costs about 50 quid to fill up the car which is about the same as a normal car and that 340 mile range is about what you'd expect from your average family car so the mpg is going to be on par with a lot of other competitors so how much does it cost to drive the future well the answer to that is £66,000 with a £5,000 grant from the government that comes to £61,000 and that is still a lot of money for this sort of car. However, like those who will queue on day one for the latest iPhone, you do pay to have this technology first and you are certainly ahead of the curve. Eventually, I have no question or shadow of doubt, the vast majority of family cars will be heading in this direction. How long? 
I couldn't possibly tell you because otherwise I'd be writing down the winning lottery numbers right now. However, the Mirai certainly has its benefits. And you have to applaud the people who are shelling out to buy it first because they are the trendsetters. They are the ones who will pave the way for this to become the norm. And you know, I'm not a tree hugger, but we all share the planet and it would be quite nice to give my kids something that vaguely resembles what I grew up in. Thanks very much for watching and let us know what you think in the comments below. Please subscribe for more on the latest and greatest cars to hit the road. For all of the latest automotive news, written reviews and coverage from motor shows, go to www.insidelane.co.uk.